വെൽക്കം ടു ലെക്ചർ നമ്പർ ത്രീ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ ഓഫ് ആസ്ട്രോണമി ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് ലോസ് ഓഫ് മോഷൻ സോ അവർ ഫോക്കസ് വിൽ ബി ഓൺ ടു ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് പ്ലാനറ്ററി ഓർബിറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദ ലോസ് ഓഫ് മോഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ യൂണിവേഴ്സൽ ലോ ഓഫ് ഗ്രാവിറ്റി Copernicus was the first person to realize that solar system was actually heliocentric that is centered on sun he lived from a period 1473 to 1543 planets exhibited apparent retrograde motion due to their distance from earth and orbits around the sun the picture shows the retrograde motion of mars when viewed from earth now let us discuss about ellipse kepler's first law states that planetary orbits are ellipses each ellipse has two foci sun is at one of the focus of a planet's elliptical orbit now another important vocabulary that you should know while dealing with planetary orbits is semi major axis an ellipse has a size described by semi major axis the longest length is twice the length of semi major axis now let us talk about eccentricity eccentricity describes the shape of the ellipse each orbit has a shape as well as a size eccentricity is a method to describe the shape how elongated the ellipse is and how far the low foci are separated eccentricity is defined by the formula e is equal to c by a where a as we know is semi major axis c is nothing but the distance between the center and one of the foci now a class question does kepler's first law allow for circular planetary orbits answer is a yes. a circle is an ellipse with an eccentricity of zero most planetary orbits are very close to circular now coming to kepler's second law it states that equal areas in equal times this is called the law of equal areas the line between the sun and the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time the significance of kepler's second law is that a planet will go fastest when closest to sun and it will go slowest when farthest from the sun now another class question the earth is closest to sun in january and farthest from the sun in july when is earth moving fastest in its orbit the answer is definitely july please see the previous discussion now kepler's third law distant planet take longer time to orbit the sun and distant planet travel at lower speeds or in other words we can say that t square is proportional to a cube where t is the time period of revolution of the planet around the sun and a is the semi major axis of the orbit of the planet now another class question the semi major axis of earth's orbit is 1 au the semi major orbit axis of saturn is 9.5 au 
which planet has a longer orbital period the answer is definitely saturn according to kepler's third law now let us discuss about galileo as we know galileo has been called the father of modern observational astronomy father of modern physics father of science and father of modern science according to stephen hawking galileo perhaps more than any other single person was responsible for the birth of modern science galileo galilei was the first to use telescope for astronomical observation he made important discoveries such as jupiter's four largest moon and phases of venus both the discoveries were controversial since it contradicted widely accepted geocentric view of the universe he also experimented with falling bodies moving objects and crafted a model of motion he stated that an object in motion will continue moving along a straight line with a constant speed until an unbalanced force acts on it from where galileo left newton started sir isaac newton was an english physicist mathematician astronomer as well as a natural philosopher his monograph philosophy naturalis principia mathematica published in 1687 lay the foundation of most of classical mechanics in his work newton described universal gravitation and three laws of motion which dominate the scientific view of physical universe for next three centuries the principle is generally considered to be one of the most important scientific book ever written so let us go and understand about newton's first law of motion it is nothing but galileo's law restated a moving object will stay in constant motion constant motion means at constant speed and in constant direction an object at rest stays at rest in this example you can see the coffee shop the coffee coffee cup is at rest with respect to the car that is in it as long as the car travels at a constant speed and direction the coffee will be level now coming to newton's second law net force causes change in motion that is acceleration a change in speed or in direction is called acceleration acceleration can be said as a measure of how quickly a change in motion takes place a net force causes acceleration mass if increased it resists the motion more mass lacks acceleration for a given force greater force greater acceleration you can see the figure now coming to newton's third law forces occurs in action reaction pairs two forces are equal in strength and the two forces have opposite direction earth and moon attract each other if f is the force that earth applies on moon and equivalent but opposite force moon acts on earth too so in summary <coughs> let's say that the newton's first law is a body will be at state of rest or uniform motion unless it is applied by an external force 
second law states that force equals mass times acceleration third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction the third law is a real reason for the tides which we see because it is the pull of the moon that makes the ocean to bulge towards it creating tides we can see the figure where when moon comes to a particular position the tides are been created now coming to law of gravity all objects on earth have been experimentally shown to fall with the same acceleration g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square experiments on moon have shown the same phenomena but with a different value of acceleration due to moon's different mass and radius let's define what a weight is weight is the product of your mass and acceleration due to gravity f weight is equal to m into g because different worlds have different gravitational acceleration you would weigh a different amount elsewhere now let us have a class question the acceleration due to gravity on moon is g by 6 the acceleration due to gravity on mars is g by 3 on which of this world would you weigh more the answer is definitely mars because gravity of mars is greater than gravity of moon now let us go through some definitions for laws of gravity gravity is an attractive mutual force between two objects with mass it depends on objects masses as well as on the distance between them greater the mass greater the gravitational force the force of gravity includes the product of both mass the greater the distance the weaker the gravitational force the gravitational force depend on the square of the distance between the two objects putting these pieces together f is equal to g mm by r square where g is the universal gravitational constant m and capital m are two masses r is a separation distance between them and this form is known as inverse square law another class test object a and b initially have same mass if object same mass is increased what would happen to the gravitational force between the two mass answer is the force would increase object a and b have same mass if the distance between the two objects are increased what would happen to the gravitational force between the two mass definitely the force would decrease because gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of distance between two objects now let us discuss orbits and satellite orbits are one body falling around the another the less massive object is considered satellite of the more massive object you can see the figures where we are trying to fire a cannon ball if you apply more fire power the cannon ball covers more distance the projectile increases the distance if we apply more fire power once we reach a power which helps the body to make a complete revolution on earth such a situation is called orbit gravity provides the centripetal force that holds a satellite in its orbit if moving too fast or too slow orbits will not be circular an object's speed at closest approach will determine the shape of the orbit and if the orbit will be bound 
or unbound now coming to our last topic that is einstein's relativity let us begin with a quote of albert einstein during his lecture on zero point energy everyone is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid it is definitely a motivational quote for all the year 1905 was a memorable one for einstein as well as a memorable year for physics in that year he published three papers in the journal analyse de physique volume 17 page 132 he published the paper on photoelectric effect page 541 49 he published the paper on brownian movement and page number 891 he published the paper on special theory of relativity he was awarded nobel prize for photoelectric effect we will discuss about michelson morley experiment in the class and definitely will we will come to this conclusion that is the special theory of relativity there are two laws one is called the principle of relativity which is already known from the theories of galileo and newton and second one is definitely a great trump of pure thought that is the principle of constancy of speed of light that speed of light is the maximum attainable velocity so to conclude lecture 3 was focused on laws of motion through the ideas of galileo kepler newton and albert einstein meet you in the next class thank you for patiently listening